Conservative historian Russell Kirk used to say that, quote, order is the first need of all. Without order, there can be no peace, no justice, and no society at all. And order requires obedience to rules, end quote. Right now, those rules and the rule of law in general are under attack. What does that mean to the immigration debate? Well, here to explain is our good friend, Dr. Dave Bratt, Dean of Liberty University School of Business, a former congressman and current professor, the student, a great student of American history who knows better than anyone what is at stake in this border crisis for the migrants, but also for the future of our own country. Uh, Dr. Bratt, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, Tony, great to be with you. So the, the thing that really puzzles me about this, uh, Dave, is that the very thing that people are pursuing, yeah. and that is a country that prospers because the rule of law and all of the benefits that come from that, it's being trampled in the process. Yeah, well, your, your show is doing a great job of, of pointing out the fundamentals. When I was in Congress, the speaker is standing up there in the well, and uh, all the great freedom fighters are up surrounding us in the pantheon of the greats. And guess, guess who's number one staring the speaker, the only one staring the speaker straight in the face, and that is Moses. And Moses, of course, is the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, the Torah, uh, the great, uh, the great lawgiver. And... Uh, it's important to note, as you just did, it's a little bit of a paradox, but it's the law that makes us free. If you do not have the law in any way, shape, or form, you have total anarchy, right? Your, your country will fall apart in minutes. And so it, the, the law in the, in the Hebrew Scripture and in the New Testament is always viewed as a, as a, as a system of grace. Uh, it's a gift from God to show us uh, the right way to live and, and, and God's intended order as the Congresswoman uh, stated earlier. Uh, and so the rule of law, you're right, it, down in, in South and Central America, they have several key elections coming up and they go back and forth by the decade between a uh, debate between the free market system and the Marxists uh, are the contenders down there, uh, just like they are now in the United States. And, and, and I, don't, I'm not, I don't say that lightly. We have very few liberals around. Liberal, the root word for liberal is liberty. Right. And there are, there are very few liberals around. But what you do, do see is deconstructionists, right? Derrida and all these come out of Harvard and Yale philosophy departments. They want to deconstruct the Judeo-Christian West. I, I long for the liberal. Yes. Uh, oh, we, we've word. lost yes. the liberal. The liberal is, is, is no longer here in Washington, D.C. It's the leftist yep. that have taken over. Yeah. No, that's right. And, and, and the leftists... Uh, it went from Karl Marx to 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 the uh, to to the new Marxists, right? Creating this new identity politics. It's on display in Virginia right now, uh, front and center. But their their goal is to take down every aspect of the Judeo-Christian West, uh, which first and foremost is religion. Uh, Marxists always know you have to get rid of religion. That is the competing power center because God. Uh, in our tradition uh, has no substitutes. God is sovereign, period, end of sentence. And uh, they know that we believers uh, take that seriously. And then underneath that is the rule of law, which God ordained. And then if you get lucky on top of it, you get a Presbyterian uh, economist named Adam Smith that shows up in Scotland and gives us a system which makes us the richest people on earth, which as you say is why people wanna come. Now Scotland has devolved into hosting the great a uh, green new deal reset with all the global leaders coming up this week and uh, europe is gone right you've, you've seen the effect of immigration on europe it's toast england uh, london is not london paris is not paris and so it's all there for people to see and it, it's amazing that the that the polls and the american people are still split 50 50 with all the evidence in and so uh it, it looks like we're facing a Romans 1 scenario. Uh, we, we need to just pray, as you're doing, uh, for a renewal of, of our vision and our, our, our ability to see God and God's will for us. So, Dave, let me ask you this question. From, from a, a Christian biblical perspective, when we're talking about the issue of immigration, is it appropriate to have borders? Well, abs absolutely. I mean, uh, you know... <laughs> 
God is kind of the author of uh, one of the original nation states of Israel, not original nation state, but of a people. And he chose them as a people. And we are a people and we have our laws and that's what makes up cultures. Uh, and that's what makes uh, civilization worth living is, is the, the variation in these cultures. It's great that there's all these cultures, uh, but to have these distinct cultures and order and civilization you need to have borders and to have an economy, you need to have borders. Uh, for the folks, if, 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 every, if all the, you know, the leftist Marxists really believe they want equality of outcome, average world income right now is probably about $7,000 uh, per capita, not 50,000 as we have in the United States. You know, and so you don't see people uh, voting with their pocketbooks that way. They're not willing to give up you know, $40,000 of, of human welfare here in order to be equal to everyone. And so we work very hard for that system. We want to export the cookbook and that system. After the World War II, we exported our system to Japan and Germany, our arch enemies, uh, through the Marshall Plan, et cetera, and constitutional government. And uh, they're great countries now, and they're our friends now, right? Our arch enemies became our friends. And so we, we as, a, as a Christian country, uh, we, we love the world. We want the world to do well. We want to spread good news. Uh, and the opposition does not have any good news to spread. So final question, and then I'm gonna ask you to pray for, for believers to have a, a, an yeah. understanding of this, but also a, a willingness to stand up and speak truth, even sure. in the face of opposition. Without borders, without the rule of law, we cannot have a prosperous nation as we so desire and pursue, correct? Yeah, since the peace of Westphalia, Going back hundreds of years, the nation state has been the entity of, upon which the modern world is ordered. Uh, and God's providential nature is behind all of that, right? Our founding in 1776 and all of that, everybody looks back in the rearview mirror, it's easy to see God's order uh, and, and, and God's providential nature. Uh, it's harder to see it in the moment, uh, but that requires faith and that requires spectacles of faith where we all see clearly. And we're missing those spectacles right now. Well, Dr. Bratt, will you pray for us? Oh, absolutely. Pleasure. Uh, dear God, we thank you first uh, for Tony uh, Perkins and his leadership uh, and his faith to guide uh, his show and bring Christians together to have a place uh, of respite uh, where rationality and faith uh, and belief in you, our Lord and God, is front and center in all we do. And so we pray uh, for restoration and we pray that everyone may see you clearly. Uh, St. Paul says we all see through a glass dimly. We pray that we all may see more clearly and that the unbelievers may come to see. We, we want what's good uh, for all people, for all of, uh, of the people you have created in your image. And so we pray especially uh, for our country and for the nation state and for your uh, divine intended order uh, that it be restored along with all the fundamentals, uh, the, the great Judeo-Christian truths in your scripture, the word of God, uh, the constitutional government, uh, which which we just see your hand uh, from beginning to end in the declaration, all people created in your image with inalienable rights that cannot be taken away by anyone. But those rights that, that, that precede the existence of government and supersede any government and any man-made law your laws are greater, dear God. We give you thanks uh, and praise for the great country we have had. We want to keep it and help the American people to fight for it as well. We pray, but you must take action. You have to take action and work in your churches and your groups and your friends uh, to spread the message of freedom and freedom requires the law and the law requires borders. Mm -hmm. And we pray for all this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Dr. Dave Bratt, thanks so much for joining us tonight. You bet. Thank you, Tony.